Can someone explain this whole structural deficit thing? Hmm. Sure. Simply put, a structural deficit is regularly spending more money than you have coming in. The state of Illinois has a formula to determine how much money schools need per pupil to provide a good education. That's called the adequacy target. There's a lot of things that help determine a school district's adequacy target, like recommended numbers and costs for teachers, specialists, counselors and social workers, librarians, media techs, nurses, teaching assistants, administrators, substitute teachers, other school site staff like lunchroom workers and custodians. The formula also takes into account the cost of things like computers and other tech equipment, student activities like extracurricular, athletics and art programs, student testing, supplies like textbooks and paper, school building operations and maintenance like utilities, insurance and upkeep. So, Illinois put all these factors into a mathematical blender to determine how much money is needed in this region of Illinois to provide kids with an adequate education. So, that's the spending side of the equation. What about the revenue or income side? Illinois then determines how much local capacity there is to fund education. In general, this is based on the Equalized Assessed Value, or EAV, of properties in the district. This is simply the value of all the property in the district as determined by the Cook County Assessor and includes both residential and corporate property. District 153 has zero control over this and the EAVs. Next, you add in whatever the school district received from the state in education funding the previous year and then, back to the mathematical blender. If you divide local capacity by the adequacy target, you get an adequacy level for District 153. Currently, the adequacy level is 65%. That means that District 153 only receives 65% of the funding it needs to provide an adequate education to our students. Yet we still do. Yay! We have low class sizes. Our teachers are paid on par with comparable school districts. Not too high, not too low. We have all those extras, like a comprehensive band, choir, and orchestra program, along with sports and after-school activities, just like wealthier school districts. How do we do it? For the past 10 years, we have been deficit spending. Temporary property tax referendums in 2011 and 2016 have provided the money we need to plug those gaps. But that reserve fund is running out, and we once again have a decision to make as a community. Should we pass another fiscal band-aid that provides a few years of relief? Or should we finally address our school district's structural deficit in a more permanent way? The alternative is the elimination of teachers, programs and services for kids, and the inability to address some of our sorely needed capital projects. So that's what's on the ballot in November. <laughs>